It's one of these days where I have a perfect solution, which is uh, an Arduino Micro running the Arduino, or I think it's not uh, the original uh, uh, original Arduino library, but uh, um, yeah, somebody who wrote it, but uh, yeah, you can get it on the Arduino, the documentation on the Arduino website. Uh, it's the keypad library and it's working just perfect yeah in case you're wondering what i need that for um yeah it's my uv exposure unit build uh card link so it's working fine but um yeah and we will have a, a look at the code uh, and all that wiring here in a second um, the reason I'm sitting here is um, I wanted to know how it's working. I mean, you can read through all the source code, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, I had a look at it and it's yeah, you can read through it, but um, it's more fun to analyze what the thing is doing, and uh, it's doing a lot, obviously. And yeah, uh, let's first have a look at uh, the library and the wiring. So basically, this here is this. And uh, yeah, you, you can't see the, the matrix part right away. Um, and it's a bit small. I will probably uh, uh, draw it in a more concise manner in a second. But uh, we have one, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine switches, the micro switches. And we have. Uh, three column lines and uh, the column lines are yeah here in the circuit diagram uh, connected for example column line three to every third switch every always every third switch and uh, the row lines uh, they take together for example here row one three switches on the other side and yeah let me draw that in a more concise manner and uh, this goes basically to the digital pins d4 to d9 for column one column three row one row three i draw it a little bit nicer for understanding so now it's easy to see uh, why why it's called a key matrix Oh, yeah, it's, it's still the key pad library, but it uses a key matrix. So you have basically row lines and column lines, uh, in my case, three each. And it, at each crossing of a, a row and a column line, you have a little switch. And somehow through the magic of software, all these nine keys are somehow scanned by the Arduino through the digital pins four through nine. And that's the magic of the keypad library. And uh, for further reference, uh, so we don't get lost, I also um, written down the uh, colors I'm using. So, uh, not from the oscilloscope, but uh, here. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. <laughs> uh, the yellow is measuring, yeah, is measuring white. Uh, sorry, and white was the first, is the first row. Uh, the next one is measuring uh, green which is column three, yeah, it's uh, the other way around. Then uh, red, column two, and lilac, 
column one. And that was, uh, let me give you a full picture again. So we're basically measuring this line and these three lines. And uh, that was exactly what we saw on the oscilloscope, the signals here. And zoomed out again, uh, the key metrics are the first three keys, which I'm currently measuring through the oscilloscope. Okay, and uh, that was the output on the oscilloscope we got from the whole stuff. And yeah, we will revisit that in detail because um, I'm thinking the oscilloscope is not showing the truth. So uh, just for orientation, um, so we have on the top, the yellow trace would be our row line and then we have our three column lines. And, uh, yeah, uh, from right to left. So column three, two, one, from top to bottom. And uh, they spike a little bit. Yeah, so there's something going on here. And if you zoom in, you see that they are actually time shifted just a wee bit, these odd curves. And uh, yeah, these odd curves, um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, yeah, I can show you what happens if I, for example, press uh, that key here. Let me zoom in. The row goes down to zero. The column also goes down to zero. Yeah, it goes high here, but it goes down to zero. And what we are doing here, we are basically shorting the two. So, yeah. If this is really high and this is really low and we would short it, uh, yeah, column one, column three, uh, through the switch, we would blow something in uh, the Arduino. So maybe this is not really high and this is not really low. But uh, just for one row, you can see um, first button, second button, third button. So yeah, it may kind of make sense, but uh, yeah, this is zero for each channel. And uh, of course, uh, two, uh, two lines up the scale is five volts. So yeah, something here is more than weird, but uh, before delving in that too deep, um, let's have a look at the library, how it's set up. So, of course, you have to uh, include the keybit library itself, uh, which is uh, not a problem because you can get it through the uh, library manager. And uh, you can ignore that stuff here that is just for the display and then you set up uh, the whole thing you first say okay how many rows do i have three uh, how many columns do i have three and then you define uh, in rows and columns um, the keys you yeah want to have and the keys are actually each identified by a char. So S, P, R, down, up, left, uh, left, right, S, 4, oh, I forgot, 
uh, R4 read, store and read. Uh, I commented it. It's all okay. And then you have uh, to define the uh, some arrays with the physical pins. And you say, uh, you remember, I said four, five, six are my columns, and seven, eight, nine are my rows. Yeah, you remember that picture here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you initialize your keypad uh, with, um, yeah, first you uh, give your keypad keys, yeah, your matrix, uh, which, yeah, key in the matrix represents which character. Uh, there's a, a, it's also in the library, a make key map function for that, or in C++ speech constructor. Uh, you give uh, the uh, row pins and the column pins, which we defined, and then now uh, at the end the number of rows and the number of columns. Uh, so really, quite easy to use. And that's almost that. Within the setup section, um, I'm using that function. That's it's completely optional and maybe misleading. Uh, that's an important point about that library. It has provides a, a method at event listener, and this is a function I defined further down. We have a look at it. But the library is neither timer nor interrupt driven. That is, if you just add that listener and press any keys, nothing, absolutely nothing will happen. Uh, it's not completely clear from the uh, documentation, uh, which is of course <clears throat> sparse, and uh, <laughs> it's not clear. I mean, if, if you add event listener, then yeah, you know, you have an event. So uh, somewhere in the background, they will program some interrupts, use interrupts, use a timer to scan the whole thing. No, they don't. We'll come to that later. And then in the loop, it's all display stuff. And then in the loop itself, sorry, in the loop itself, I constantly call the, uh, the method getKey from the keypad class. And that simply, yeah, returns me a character, a character which is defined in exactly that matrix. So if I press the key in column one, row one, it will return the character capital S. If I click a uh, column three, row three, it will return the greater character. Um, it's a nice feature, so uh, you have you really don't have to worry with uh, uh, some numbers. I mean, in theory, um, going down here, in theory, it, it could just uh, return you uh, the column and the row that has been pressed. Um, so yeah, that the mapping is built in, it's a very nice feature. And then we have that keypad event, okay, which I used also in the setup section here. That's the function I register uh, with the keypad class as an event listener. Um, as far as I can see, you can you can only have one event listener, okay? Um, but as said before, that has nothing to do with interrupts or timers, which is uh, on one hand nice because uh, then it cannot interfere with you using the few timers uh, these tiny Arduinos have, or with you using the interrupts. On the 
downside you really have uh, in regular time intervals that is as often as possible uh, call that get key otherwise nothing will will be happening so and in the get key uh, you get I don't know why they call it keypad event as a type but uh, uh, in fact it's a char okay so I uh, put the input parameter of that function, uh, use it in a switch statement and compare it to the chars I have defined. And uh, yeah, you've seen that demo. Uh, I print on the display then stop, pause, run, down, up, left, store, right, read, right, uh, depending on uh, which key has been pressed. And uh, you also get a state uh, which is nice um, which can is uh, basically uh, you can use pressed so um, yeah talking oscilloscope uh, rising edge you have hold you have uh, yeah your uh, signal is up and you have release uh, your signal is going down again again and then you also have idle if you need that normally yeah maybe who knows um, so and that's it that's how you use the keypad library and we can have a look at the website to the Arduino documentation and there you will find that there is not much stuff so that's the keypad library for Arduino. So Mark Stanley, Alexander Breivik, Breivik. Um, the lead developer, blah, 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 blah. So uh, we have that constructor, constructor we used and uh, yeah. Um, I don't know why they don't pass that array of chars uh, or that two-dimensional array of chars directly. I guess they have their reasons uh, and use that uh, intermediate make key map constructor instead. Um, but you have uh, the function I haven't shown you, wait for key. That is a blocking wait. Okay, so uh, basically you shouldn't use that uh, other for test purposes. Um, then you have that char get key that uh, returns a char if uh, yeah, a key is pressed and it's non-blocking. That is, if no key is pressed currently, it goes through. Uh, get state, I told you, uh, it returns uh, for the pressed key if it's uh, pressed, released, or hold, or idle. Idle would be, of course, no char has been returned here. And this might be also helpful. Uh, key state changed. Um, so basically, if a key goes from uh, idle to pressed uh, to hold and back to released, um, this would return true. I'm not really too thrilled about that. Um, I haven't used it. Maybe it's for some people useful. More important function is the uh, set debounce time. So that library has debouncing built in, which is very nice. And uh, you can uh, set here the debounce time in milliseconds. So uh, yeah, for example, 10 milliseconds or for very bad switches, 50 milliseconds or so, whatever. And uh, you can set the hold time, and the hold time basically, uh, maybe I should point with that. And uh, the hold time basically uh, determines when a key goes from the pressed 
to the hold state. So uh, that's useful if you want to do, um, you know, like uh, on a Windows keyboard, a uh, key repeat function. So you press it short uh, and you have one char, you press it a little bit longer and then tuck, 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 the character is repeated in your application. And last not, but not least, um, yeah, the add event listener. We used that and that's it. Obviously, <clears throat> the latest version of the libraries are multi-key capable. Uh, yeah, I will complete that description this weekend. Uh, I think that was, we have to go up to the versions, but I think it was uh, 2013. So I, I haven't bothered to try that stuff out. And then there comes an example, but you saw mine, which uh, also corresponds to the hardware I'm using. And uh, one thing that might be interested is, uh, yeah, support was added to allow other hardware to be used along with the keypad. Uh, okay, that's a nonsense uh, sentence. So Joe Young's keypad library added support for several I2C expander chips. That's the important statement. That is, uh, instead of uh, like I'm doing, oh, sorry, oh, wait, like I'm doing it here, passing from my keypad uh, six lines back to my Arduino, you can use an I uh, some, yeah, I to see. Uh, input output expanded chips uh, in conjunction with that library or with some modification of the library. The link is here. And uh, yeah, and I will give a link to that page in the description. And basically, uh, yeah, do I2C communication to your keypad, which is, uh, if you're running out of IO pins, a very nice thing to have. So, um, since we are now through with all that <clears throat> nasty software stuff, we should go back to the oscilloscope and look how that keypad library is actually scanning the keys each time and only each time the get key function is called. Uh, the only reason uh, why we get on the oscilloscope such a nice continuous pattern is because I'm calling that get key function continuously in the loop. Otherwise you would, um, yeah, would get no signal. As I said, the get key function, it does one full scan of the keyboard. Okay, um, yeah, let's get back to the oscilloscope. Yeah. And I lied to you, uh, column one line is not lilac, it's blue. So blue, red, green for the columns and white for row one. And that's basically here my row, zero line would be here. So it seems to be at five volt constantly. And here are my rows starting with the uh, zero lines. And uh, yeah, two units up would be five volts. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, you can see the whoop, repeating nature of the whole thing. We looked already into that uh, other way around. So, and uh, yeah, you can also see I'm pressing now again the three buttons and I can zoom in a little bit more. So button one, button two, button three, and back. So you you got an idea what's what's happening. But um, I started uh, stating uh, if this here 
would really be our row line. I'm going to show that here. Our row line. Our row line really being at 5 volts. And our first column line being yeah, column lines, row lines at 0 volt. And then closing the switch. That would be basically a short and uh, we don't see a short if I press that button. We see the row line, yeah, the top going to zero and uh, our column line going high. I mean, almost high. You see, in that area here, it stays at zero volts. And that is a very, very interesting thing. And um, I'm sorry, we have to have a look at the Arduino pins, how they work internally right now. So that's basically very simplified the uh, a digital pin uh, DX2 to um, whatever 12 or 16 uh, of an Arduino. There's a lot of stuff missing but um, that's enough for our purposes. So uh, if you want to have a digital pin as output you can either uh, via some MOSFET, and I don't I have no idea what kind of MOSFETs they are actually using, so I left that part out. You can either pull that up to the uh, 5 volt rail, or you can pull that down to ground. Yeah, which is basically a short connection or very low impedance, just the internal resistance of the MOSFETs. And of course, uh, they never ever uh, switched on uh, on the same time. That would be a short, of course, from 5 volts to ground. So uh, using it at, uh, as an output, the digital pin, either that one is switched on, it's high, or that one is switched on, it's low. Um, the If you use it as an input, the original input impedance uh, uh, of an Arduino pin is um, in the mega ohms range somewhere. So really high impedance, uh, at least um, if you don't, uh, yeah, for digital stuff. But you also have, if you're using it as an input, if you're using it as an input, uh, both these MOSFETs are switched off, of course. Uh, you have also the option to switch on a pull-up resistor through a MOSFET. And uh, this is a, a 20, yeah, according to the documentation, it depends on the Arduino type, uh, um, ATmega type, uh, 20K to 50K resistor, pulling that line up to five volts. And uh, what we can do to verify if our pins are actually uh, working uh, as uh, outputs or as uh, high impedant inputs or as inputs with the pull up resistor is we can put a little bit of load on them. Huh? by simply terminating each of the uh, digital outputs uh, we're looking at by a 100k resistor to 5 volts and 100k resistor to, uh, to ground, uh, keeping it, if it is indeed high impedance, to about 2.5 volts. Uh, yeah, I also used 120k resistors because I run out of 100k resistors. But this gives us now a very clear image on this oscilloscope what's actually going on. 
Yeah, quick look on the uh, eight resistors uh, going to the positive and negative rail each uh, before we go on to the oscilloscope. These are really just uh, cross over all, all the, uh, yeah, the cables I'm using. And uh, this is actually constantly, that is our row line, that is constantly, remember row, that one here, that is constantly in an input state with the pull-up resistor. You can see that uh, because it's not 5 volts would be here, it's not at uh, the 5 volt line, but it's pulled a little bit higher so to uh, 2.5, uh, 3, 4 volts somewhere. Whilst our column lines <coughs> yeah. Bro, our column lines uh, do a little dance. And you see uh, here uh, each one does the same dance, just uh, out of phase a little bit. Um, it starts being high impedance, so you see through my two my pull down and pull up resistor, my external or voltage divider, uh, exactly pinning it to 2.5 volts, again 0 volts, 5 volts for the dark blue channel. And then it goes to an active low phase and that induces a wee bit of crosstalk. And uh, then it goes shortly to an active high phase which again causes some crosstalk and then it goes back to high impedance. The same happens for uh, the other column row, row two, uh, column row, for column two, uh, only uh, it starts uh, doing its dance after the first column is finished. And then we have the third, basically the same, it starts the dance after the second one is finished. And this of course repeats again and again and again. Oops. So, uh, yeah, and the frequency, okay, uh, if I turn on the scale, can I get a frequency reading 90 hertz it sets 90 hertz so that's how often this repeats that cycle the whole cycle 90 times a second uh, which is quite good and um, what's even more surprising for me if I press the button You see what you expect. Am I still in focus? Uh, you see what you expect to see, and that is that our uh, pull up input here exactly matches that waveform. In the parts where it's active. And here, where we have a floating input, we probably read uh, yeah, the high voltage, uh, uh, the pull-up voltage here on our road channel. Next button, that column. Okay, that shifts a little bit, but uh, yeah, you can see the pink line. And the third button, yeah. 
So, what does that all mean? I think we should, uh, yeah, go back to paper. And uh, most interestingly, uh, through all that, uh, yeah, uh, forcing these pins to a certain voltage level, um, I couldn't believe it at first, but... It's still working. <laughs> oh, pause, stop, run, pause, stop. Yeah, and the rest should be fine too. Flabbergasting. Um, okay, uh, back to the... Uh, paperwork and theory. So how do these pulse trains help us to read out our keypad? And uh, for single buttons uh, the answer is quite simple. Let's say we close a uh, here press the key column one row one close that switch then column one and row one are connected and uh, as soon as column one goes low i can detect that on the uh, with pull up resistor uh, input on row one column one goes low row one i can detect it um, that high spur they built in, um, I guess kind of a black magic um, uh, yeah because um, for single key detection it does absolutely nothing nothing at all um, because this is pulled up. It's an input, but it's pulled up to high. So if I connect it via a switch to uh, another high signal, uh, yeah, nothing happens. Um, interestingly, just looking at one switch, column one, row one, connected uh, by pressing the key, closing the switch. Um, I could also simply take uh, the high level of that input, I mean it's input with a pull-up resistor, uh, and measure here in the area going, uh, everything going up to 5 volts. But uh, yeah, this would require uh, column 1 uh, for really uh, reliably measuring it to be pulled down, because these, during these times uh, these inputs are simply floating and uh, the nice the nice thing about that library is that you uh, yeah if you ignore my pull up pull down uh, or voltage divider resistors here uh, besides the switches you don't need any other components it simply works like that um, so yeah these uh, negative pulses one by one that helps you detect which switch in which column is pressed. So regarding the multi-switch claim of that library uh, where, where we read, uh, <laughs> I will finish this after uh, uh, in the afternoon or after I had my lunch or something like that. I don't remember quite. I highly doubt that. Uh, maybe for some key combinations, but not in general. I don't believe it. Um, and yeah, the software calls are not really documented yet. And that was, when was it? 2012 or so. So, uh, mm, no. And the reason 
is if you, for example, close this switch and this switch, that basically means, yeah, you shorted out row one and row two. That is row one and row two are no longer, yeah, it's, it's now the same. It's the same. That means uh, your input D7 and D8 have always the same signal. And uh, it doesn't now, uh, yeah, all that timing here, what you do on the columns, uh, it can't help you at that stage because this is uh, basically uh, electrical the same net as soon as uh, both switches uh, are closed. And if you close that switch too, then you shorted these out. And then everything you do on any of these keys is automatically, yeah, uh, there's no way around it. Uh, this uh, automatically uh, is measured on row one, row two, and row three uh, at the same time. And you cannot have any, any distinction then. And uh, normally in, um, in big uh, normal matrices, uh, they introduce here uh, in parallel, uh, I don't know if I'm writing that, uh, drawing that correctly now, but uh, they somehow introduce diodes. Okay, so uh, you don't have here a real short because uh, now you have here just diodes. And then with a correct jiggling around uh, with the voltage levels, you, uh, you can still read in which row a key is. Um, yeah, so um, I can't see. I mean, uh, this, this looks quite complicated for, uh, for a single key scan and maybe they intended to do a multi-key scan. Maybe somebody can tell me uh, if that multi-key stuff really works with that uh, keypad library. Um, I, I, I can't see uh, how. N no, I don't see it. So uh, for single key detection it would be uh, absolutely okay to have just here low pulses. That would be okay. Um, a second nice thing about that library is that only one pin at a time is an output switched to yeah, zero or uh, five volts, only one pin at a time. All other pins are inputs, some floating, some, uh, yeah, some with a pull-up resistor. And that means if you mess up in your cabling, uh, you never ever have uh, can short out something that's uh, actually let me take another color uh, yeah because it's stretched over time you cannot short out uh, some high potential again uh, some high output against a low output because they spaced it over time that's very nice so uh, whatever you do with um, yeah, your connections, you cannot kill your 
uh, Arduino. That's also a plus. But um, yeah, as I said, I, I don't see the uh, really universal uh, multi-key uh, detection capability uh, with, uh, without introducing diodes or something else. So this was the adventure with the Arduino keypad library and uh, the oscilloscope, which was, uh, yeah, m most interesting. I mean, I'm uh, not normally doing such, uh, you know, uh, let's call it tutorials. I will put that in a playlist tutorials. Uh, uh, a year ago or even longer I made one about uh, voltage doubler and charge pumps, uh, link here. Um, yeah, and I only do that if I really want to uh, yeah, get into the meat of something because uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not satisfied uh, with something yeah, just working and I don't know uh, why it's working. In that sense, uh, last few on the still working keypad. Store, read, left, uh, right, left, up, down. Oh, so nice. Stop, pause, run. And bye.